I had to bribe Nico with some food to get I, him in here this morning. So is everything to your liking? I just had two wings. Yeah. A piece of pizza, uh-huh. a meatball sandwich, a small slider, uh-huh. meatball slider. Meatball slider. Basically for brunch. Okay, well, yeah, that's good. I mean, that's yep. the way. I'm, I'm on a diet. We'll work for food. I'm is on the a way, diet. I'm trying to lose 10 pounds. Yep. yep. And uh, I want to say thanks to my buddy Theo and the whole crew at Publico for uh, feeding Ninko this morning. And happy Very birthday. Good. And happy birthday, Theo, yes. So, uh, Wiggy, you, we were talking about Mac Jones before the break. Uh, happy and... almost birth- birthday, Courtney. Oh, thank you, yes, Curtis. Yes, Courtney. Thank big you. day, Sunday. Thanks. Big day. Thank you. Um, And Wiggy, when we discuss Mac Jones, refuses to put any of the blame and where this uh, offense currently is on the offensive line. Um, So your perspective on that, if you could help, you might not help me out. I've never said that, but go ahead. (laughs) Go ahead. I, you know, I just, as a pass rusher, as a defensive end, oh, I would love the rush against this line because it's inconsistent when it comes to just health and bodies and when you are a turnstile mm-hmm. of moving parts at the offensive line wait you know this as mm-hmm. a tight end you look next to you you got a tackle that's a greater and you, you know you're gonna go run a zone and you're like i got a dude next to me that's we're, we're gonna work our way up we're gonna have a great play here and you look over next to you you got somebody you don't even know who's looking at you like is it on two or one and you're like oh uh it's on one <laughs> i don't know if this guy's gonna make the play or block with me mm-hmm. the way that we need to so Offensive line is such an important position based on your group and the relationship within that group. If you look at any of the best teams that the Patriots have had, they had a core group of offensive linemen that stuck together. Even, you know, there might be an injury, you lose a guy, that's that's football, right? But as a whole, you had a group of guys that were together for a long time. Right. And then on top of that, you had one of the best coaches to ever coach, and Dante, who's going into the Hall of Fame, mm. Skarnecki, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and then I, I also think that along the way here in the last four years, they had a great assistant coach under Skarnecki, right? That's Cole Popovich, right? He was a he was the assistant offensive line coach who was here, who in the last three years he left because the whole COVID thing and the mandated. The he what? Whole, he left. He because- left. He didn't get uh, vaccinated. Oh, okay. Right. So, if you didn't, because it was a league mandated thing, it wasn't just hey the Patriots. It was a league thing. All the coaches and staff had to have it. Well, he would. He didn't feel comfortable with it. Yeah. So he smart man left. So he left. He left. So then after he leaves, you bring in somebody else, and you've had some issues at the offensive line. You bring in another guy that used to play here, but maybe you had the one of the best coaches right there. Who was, who, was under, with, who was with Dante for a long time. Yes. Yeah. And then he had to leave because yeah. So then he didn't it's feel not really about the talent you have because if you can get a good coach like Scott Nekia, who basically got Steve Nail off of a wrestling mat and turned him into a great player. Well, there's a, it's a good balance between having a great coach and understanding how do I get the most out of each player. Well, that's but the, then also, and then I'll go back to Bill uh-huh. and how maybe it's harder for Bill to get to – some of these younger players that I because agree with. now in 2023 the team aspect back when we were younger and you could sell team 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 it's all about the team it's all about winning now it's an individual thing right. because of the the money that these guys are making in college and and well right. why do i care about the team when personally i'm pushing myself and i'm have my instagram account and it's through the roof and i got ads and people paying me and i'm i'm my own person. I'm the LLC. Right. Well, uh, guys, right? guys in college. Want guys in the, college. So they, it's, wanna, they want. Uh, they want ownership. ownership. Yeah. They want ownership. It's cuckoo. What do you think of that? We don't live in reality, people. We're like <laughs> out of our minds right now. You know, Let me say, hey, oh, I have a business that I've started, right, and it's valued at a certain level. I'm gonna go hire some kid out of college and give him five percent. <laughs> no. You don't no. think that's gonna happen no. for Caleb Williams? Tom Brady <laughs> didn't even get ownership. Of the the it's a Raiders. smart move by the kid. You got no, it's not. You got it's, it's, it's not. No, it's no. a La La Land oh, no. move. Do you not no, even it, like people uh, making it's sure La La that they're here's, here's they, like, Mac, Jones, Mac Jones did that after his so, rookie season. So back to Bill. I'm talking about Bill mm-hmm. and going back to the initial conversation on you know Bill sticking around and Bill like Bill understands football and in the X's and O's and the game right. planning. He's the smartest ever. Still a great coach. So if if Bill. If anything happens where Bill goes somewhere else, 
and it's a loaded roster, he's going to win a Super Bowl. Bingo. He's going to win a Super so Bowl. Nico, that, that, Nico, why don't they load this roster? I don't know. I don't I have, have a checkbook. <laughs> I don't yeah. have, I'm going to tell you. Isn't on Robert Kraft. I would say at the end of the I mean, day, Bill when you look want... at the, the spending, Just you have to my... spend. You know, like if I – no offense to any – car maker or anything like if you want a porsche you got to spend money to buy a porsche bingo like you can't get a car that's high quality and the fastest and you know whatever and spend nothing you can't get a porsche for a camry price no that's why i blame bobby copperfield but the because his is... biggest illusion greg and i've been saying it since they won and listen i love robert Kraft. don't get it twisted <laughs> but what he's done he just got, yeah i mean i'm going got, I'm, I'm invited to brady yeah. night yeah oh, we so might not be there <laughs> no no I'm, listen, i might not be there if it weren't for brady I told you, it wasn't for me. We wouldn't know who the hell Brady <laughs> was. Oh, okay. The, the ten catches in the snow. <laughs> okay. Don't Let's get it twisted. Hey, by the way, Wiggy, one-hit wonder. <laughs> That's it. Hey, I'll take my one-hit wonder because you know what? It spawned so many other hits. Right. I love you. Here's the way I look at it. You got Robert Kraft, who we have Ty Law comes in. He talks about it. If you want Lamar Jackson, you got to you gotta spend. You got, And if yes. Robert wants to spend, he can do that. Yeah. If Robert wanted Brady, we heard Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, when they asked about his contract... It was nothing. It, it was pennies. It was 15 it, million right. bucks. But it wasn't, go talk to Bill Belichick. It was, go talk to Mr. Kraft. So, Robert, at the end of the day, if he's saying, hey, Bill, here's the budget. Don't spend it all in one place. Now, Bill has to shop in those bargain bins. And that's why, <laughs> and that's why I say, Bill will never go anywhere because as long as he's here... Uh, Bill, Bill is always going to be Robert's toilet bowl. Any crap that falls down from above is going to land in the lap of Bill Belichick. Talk to Mr. Kraft. Come on. But, Ninko, Bra do you agree with Wiggy that Bill Belichick would rather spend more money and he's told he can't? I don't know if that's true, but it seems like when you look at the history, because every, isn't everything like checks and balances? You can look at it, and what does it look like? If you mm -hmm. look at what they've spent and you look at the moves that they've made, mm -hmm. the one thing that I would say – is the draft okay? Yeah. So there has been some misses in yeah. the draft. Right. You look at some of the receivers and all those. The, they won on their first round pick this year, right? He's going to be a player. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care yeah. what you say. He's going to be yeah. one of the and best. Keon yeah. And Keon White. And Keon White is going to be. I said when I saw him in in training camp, he could potentially be one of the next best edge guys because he's two ninety and he's got hustle and he can run. So. The one thing I could say is on the spending part and how, how how much how much they're spending to go and get people it's it hasn't been there but then the draft department like that's hurt them too because if you look at some of the other teams that have had the success they've won in the draft they bring in some key pieces and those are the guys you have for has 4 game, years has the game passed bill by or can bill still coach No I don't think the game has passed bill by because at the end of the day it's all about X's and O's, and when you go out there on the football field, how do you how do you operate offensively and defensively? If you have the horses, like who wins a Kentucky Derby? The, the fastest best, horse, the, fastest the horse. best horse. If you have average, they're going to be in the middle of the pack. If you have bad ones, they're going to be at the end, right? So at the end of the day, football is so simple. It comes down to how do you execute and can you make the plays when they're there? So – if you look at that Parker drop, yeah, that's a play that needs to be made. Speak it needs to be caught. Right. But he said he catches it. He might. They win that game. He's an average horse. Speaking of that, there though, you go. But you paid him. Did did did, right? his, yep. did the way he responded to that's the, a terrible response. That's a response that if you're if you're a teammate, you look at it. You're like, what are you talking about, dude? Make the grab, make the catch. And if you don't, the first thing you say is, "That's on me. I got to make that play." I let my team down because when the ball's in the air, but what's the what's the saying? If you're a receiver, if it touches your hands, catch what? it, catch it. So if the ball hits you, I don't care if it hits your if it hits your fingertips, you got to stretch out and get it. If it, it hit him in the palm, it was a perfect throw. Yeah, it, it was, was a, a perfect. Throw. It was a perfect throw in the dropped right in the basket. Should have caught that ball. The first thing you say is, "Well, I, I mean, he comes out and it's kind of like wishy washy. What do you think? Oh, yeah, it hit my finger. Yeah, you what know, do you think? Yes, you say no." I let my team down. I'm a guy that's supposed to make that play, and if I make that play, we probably win. We got to go, Devonte Smith. You got to take accountability. But and Nico, I, how is there accountability for a guy that they gave a raise to because he bitched about interest in DeAndre Hopkins? I mean, there's no accountability no, uh, on. This at the end of the that. day, accountability is making plays. I don't care how much you make. Like you can make, you could be the highest paid guy on the team, 
And if you don't make the plays, people don't respect you. Right. Like if money is whatever. It's right. you know, it, okay, you make a lot, you don't make a lot. If you're a free agent and you're making nothing, but you're out there balling, people are like, this dude's a bo- but this see, dude's the a player. Pro- the problem I have with this thing when I said it, nowadays, today's athlete, and it starts when they're young. They never have to be accountable. A lot of them, that, so, so they climb up the ladder. We're, we're, yes, and that you know what happens with that. I've seen it time and time again with guys that are super athletic. Right, you got a kid that's a super athlete, fast, can catch the ball, runs. Maybe in the gym doesn't work too hard. Doesn't really you know run the extra sprints. So you're on this upswing, and you're just hanging on because you're super talented. Everyone's giving you whatever. You get the contract. You're the first-round pick. And then you get to 31 or 32 or 30 or 28, whatever it is, and you got to rely on your fundamentals, and you got to rely on your work ethic, and you don't have it. <laughs> then you just fall off a cliff. So those are the guys that get the big contract, and then they just never produce again. They just never do it. And then on the flip side of it, you have certain guys that are sick, and they're mental about, I need to get better, mm-hmm. like Tom. And then you hit that, I'm getting older part, but you rely on your work ethic, you rely on your fundamentals, you rely on the game, the knowledge of the game, and then you just keep climbing. And then you can fall back on all that, and then you might not be as fast or as athletic or throw as far, but you have all the fundamentals. So it hap- you see it all the time. And if you are, that's, that's why when you see a kid that is gifted, you have to push him as if he's not. Right. You have to push him like, do you want to be the best that you can be and every single day improve and get better? Because if you don't and you just give the NIL deals and they make all this money, they're going to sit back and say, well, why do I got to listen to you? I'm I'm, I'm set. You know? yeah, and that's, that's a bill's specialty. Yeah, yeah. You know? Isn't yeah. it? Uh, yeah, it's pushing people past their comfort levels. Yeah. You know? All right, we got to take a break. Rob Ninkovich is here. It's a Patriots Friday. Gresham Foyer coming up at 10, but we'll be right back.